Good morning, y'all. Welcome to Apron Strings. If I look like I'm crying, I'm not. I have got horrible allergies for some reason. And I took allergy medicine. My eyes are running, my nose is dripping, but I'm alive and well. I'm gonna um, do a few, two or three different things here this morning. I'm gonna talk a little bit, and I'm gonna play the piano a little bit. And I wanna show y'all my raised beds that I've had a long, long time. And, um, didn't have them put together because I was just waiting for spring. So my grandson, Jordan, has been here and uh, he's been putting them together for me. And I'm going to have to fence my chickens off to where they can't get over there to scratch in them because with them empty sitting out in the yard, they love to hop over in them like they think I've put them some food in there or something. So I have an idea of what I'm going to do. and. Um, just fence off from the hen house, you know, make them a little L shape in the back of the yard where they'll still have room to get out and run and dig worms and all, but they won't be able to, to roam the whole yard and peck in my vegetables. I'm gonna, tr our garden out front was just a wonderful producing garden because it was full of um, mushroom compost and clean out from horse stalls, which is very rich and good fertilized. Well, somebody gave Troy some horse stall clean out and it was recommended by a man that we'd been getting it from. And when he went and got it, oh my goodness, my garden began to fill up with those sticker weeds, whatever those horses had been eating. That was about three years ago and I'm still battling with those weeds. Um, Somebody told my son for me to spray something called W4 on it, and he said it's organic, and that it would take care of them. So, if you have any ideas, list it down below, but when they come up in the spring, I'm going to spray them and try to clean that garden out to where we can at least do corn and maybe a few peas out there. I have to battle with the deer, and they eat the peas. And we do have coons that get in the corn, but not... They don't ruin it like the deer will just come in one night and clean the whole patch out. But I do like to plant out there because it's such good rich dirt. But that's one reason I wanted to be in the backyard. I have a six foot wood fence around my back and the deer uh, have never tried to hop over in there. So with the addition of some raised beds, I'll be able to grow a good variety and not have to worry about animals two-legged or four-legged when I want to go out and work or when I'm not out there. Now my tea buzzer's going off and I got to go do something real important and make me a gallon of sweet tea and uh, I'll be back in a little bit and show y'all my raised beds and we'll play the piano a little bit and talk a bunch. Now, I've told y'all before, I can't play the new music. I learned to play back in the dinosaur days, so all I can play is plain southern gospel music. But there's a bunch of y'all that have been asking me, when was I going to play again? Would I please play? So today, I thought I would play two or three songs, and then I want to take y'all out, show you my raised bed, and... Um, show you the chickens and how they're doing and this is just a chit chat I guess it's called a vlog I don't know because I'm not going to cook on this one but let's have a little bit of music and you know what if y'all know the songs it might do your soul good if you'd sing along we're in perilous times and sometimes just to quietly sit for two or three minutes and give the good Lord some concentrated thoughts and prayers and sing some of the old hymns that have good meaning to them is a real refresher. So if you know the words to some of the songs then sing along and worship in your own way. If you want to pat your foot and clap your hands that's fine and if you want to sit real still and listen that's fine. Do it your way. But let's give the Lord a little bit of time this morning through worship through music and singing and songs. I'm going to start out with one of my favorites, and it's a lot of our favorites, and it's Amazing Grace. His mercy and His grace is truly amazing.
that verse about when we've been there 10,000 years. I cannot imagine being in his presence forever and knowing that I never have to deal with this earth and its problems again, that I'm there for eternity. It's a good thing to think about. I'm going to do what a friend we have in Jesus. that we used to sing and it's simply oh how I love Jesus and if y'all know it uh, sing it There's one verse of that that says, to me, he is so wonderful. And yes, he is so wonderful. Another one that I think just about everybody knows is, I'll fly away. And another one is, this world is not my home. Um, it's hard for me to pick because I'm not sure what y'all know and what you don't know. Let's see, there's another one.
we're going to go out and uh, I'm going to show y'all my raised beds. They're all which ways out there. The boys just put them together. Or Jordan put them together, but his brother helped him carry one of them out. And I helped carry one of them. Uh, and just laid them down because I'm not just sure how I'm going to arrange them yet. Troy's going to try to uh, find a load of sand that we can put down and level it. And then I've got lots of cardboard I've been saving to put them on. And I have some of the rolls of the weed block that I bought several years ago at Costco and it's still good. Hadn't used it. I had plans to someday have some raised beds. So see, don't give up on hope. If there's something you really want, one of these days you might be able to have it. So let's go and let me show y'all them and the chickens and and uh, we'll probably talk a little bit more. Maybe three or four words. I hate to show y'all how everything looks, but I've got that kind of blocked off where the chickens will scratch all of those leaves out because I want to put them in the compost. But everything out here is just bleak and dead, just like it is at your house, I'm sure, because we're not into the spring yet. But I'll show y'all. Look, every time they hear me come out the door, they run over here thinking they're going to get a treat. They're spoiled. Okay. That means I'm trying to carry the tripod where maybe I won't shake so bad. There's my beds that Jordan has done. And he's got one, two, three, four of them done. There's one more in there for him to put together. And, um... We'll get that done, and then I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put them. Now, over here, y'all have seen these. This is my raised beds that I plant every year. And you see those tomato baskets in them? That dirt has lots of earthworms in it. If those chickens can get in there, let me just tell you, they eat every one of them out of it. Now, right here, I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Um, in this container is garlic, and I'm very proud of it. And I'm going to try to walk around and show you the other garlic bed. I know, it's not very pretty where everything's just a mess. This is my uh, onions and some celery that I replanted from household uh, stuff. And I'm real proud of it. In fact, I've already cut those green onions once. Used to be in a recipe and now I can do them again. This is some more garlic. And it's doing so good. All those little things you see laying around in there, that's to keep the chickens out. And these big ones here, I've got three of them. That's elephant garlic. I'm real anxious to see what they look like, uh, how big a pods they make. That's my lemongrass. It kind of didn't like the cold weather too well. And this is my other bed. that has garlic in it. And, and I've got the tomato cage over it to keep it from um, the chickens out of it. Now these two big plants at the end that are dead, that is uh, African blue basil. And somebody told me if I would leave it in there, which I can come and clip it close to where it comes out of the ground, that it might come back. I doubt it and, and the recommendation is not to grow it, uh, not to try to propagate it, but just to get another plant. Now, they grow it somehow, but anyway. And then this is what it looks like out here. It's kind of dreary and a mess. I got plants in the greenhouse, keeping them good for right now. See that pile of right here? That's mushroom compost. And over there, let me see if I can zoom up. I won't have to go over there. You see that table right here? That's got a bunch of hanging baskets full of this mushroom compost, and I'm going to put purple dew that I've got in the greenhouse. I'm going to pop me several baskets of that and some more stuff to have baskets to put around. But I'm telling you, it's just sad when you come out here in the wintertime and it looks so yucky. The chickens are having fun getting out of those damp leaves, but uh, I'll be glad when I can get everything planted. But anyway, I'll give y'all a little twirl here. The chicken pen and on beside it, and then that's our pump house. And I, ha I don't have anything growing beside it right now. And it's cold out here, and I'm fixing to take y'all right back in the house because I don't like to be cold. That's my sitting area that I enjoy so much when this tree is leafed out and makes a shade. And then in the back corner, you probably can't see, way over in that corner, I have a couple of hammocks and some plants, but it looks grody right now, so we're not gonna go over there and look. 
the herb area looks pathetic where the red stove is and um, it'll be pretty in a couple of months maybe and we'll go over there and tour it but right now I'm going to take y'all back inside and we'll see what else we're going to talk about I don't know if I showed y'all or not but see that big old rooster he's huge that's what my son brought me for Christmas this year so I hadn't decided right where he's going to sit this spring but he's going to be somewhere where I can enjoy him okay y'all I hope y'all have enjoyed the little tour and the chat and the piano playing. Hope you sung along and hope the Lord blessed you. And uh, you felt his nearness and his presence because let me tell you what, when I feel Jesus, all is well. And in the times we live in, we need a few minutes of all is well. But it really is well. And I'm going to tell y'all, don't fear what's going on in the world. Don't fear the nations when they rise against nations. Read Matthew 24, and you'll understand what's going on. Jesus promised over 2,000 years ago that one of these days he was going to have Gabriel blow a trumpet, and he was going to lift his people out of this world. Y'all may not believe in it, but I believe in that old black back book, and I believe every word that it says. And by when they asked him how they were going to know that it was the end time, in Matthew 24, he drew a picture of where we live today. So his timing is not our timing. The Bible says a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day with the Lord. But by looking at the happenings of Matthew 24 that parallel with the day we live in, we know that we must be getting close to the end of this dispensation. So, I said that to tell you this, look up. We may be going to heaven pretty soon. Do whatever you have to do. Lay aside whatever weight the Bible says that does easily beset you. The things that cause you, that you know, cause you not to be pleasing to God. Lay it aside. Live as close as you can to Him. Hold His hand. Trust Him. Believe Him. And He's coming back for us before too long. And until then, the Bible says, occupy till he comes. So here's what you have to know. You live in the realm of, is this right or is it wrong? Does it please God or does it not please God? Every day. But every day you are expecting him to return. But we have to live in this present world. We can't just get somewhere and hibernate and quit living and say, we're just going to stay here till Jesus comes. You can't do that. You have to live your life as though you have a thousand years as far as planning and doing and living in this world. But you have to live your life as though you think he may come this afternoon and get you. you got to be ready. Keep your heart clean. The Bible says his mercies are renewed daily. You know what that's for? Because we're human. He created us. He knows us. He knows we make mistakes. But you're supposed to say, I'm sorry. That's what that mercy's there for. Jesus, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said those harsh words. I shouldn't have thought that thought. See, he reads your thoughts. Sometimes we owe somebody around us an apology because they heard what we said. Sometimes we can just apologize to Jesus and don't have to go tell them what we were thinking because only God can read our thoughts. But you're accountable for them. I don't know why I got on this mode today, but I just want y'all to know there is hope in the world we live in. And from Daniel, the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, the book of Revelations in the New Testament, what's going on with Russia, has been ordained from the beginning. Russia is the bear in Bible prophecy. So just, just rest in him because, you know, he knows everything about it. We don't know. But we know where we're going to end up one of these days. And I keep telling my grandbabies, you know, I'll be 70 in April, so I've lived a good long life. But they have plans and desires for their future. And I told them, I said, live, get your education, make plans. We don't know. I said, but just remember, whatever we have to endure, if we have to go through tribulation, whatever we have to endure, one breath past this life, we've got it made. And that's what you have to keep in your mind. If the time comes that 
the church is facing opposition and persecution and we're going through tribu tribulation, just remember, whatever, whatever, one, my, after my last breath, I'll have it made. Stay close to the Lord. Hold His hand. The good Lord bless y'all. Bring you peace and comfort. I told you before, read Psalm 91. It has lots of promises there. It's a safe place. It's a refuge. Don't be alarmed. Don't alarm your children. Don't alarm your family with fears and what ifs. What ifs can take every bit of the joy out of the day. And they're just figments of your imagination. Don't let things like that take your joy. Enjoy today. Today we live in a country where there's peace and we're safe. Let's just enjoy today. And then if someday our country should be like the Ukraine, we'll deal with it then. But right now, let's enjoy life like God has given us and make the most out of it. The Lord bless y'all. I will be back in a few days. Uh, I am going to go with Lauren to college this week because Richard is not doing well at all and April needs to be with him. And I know some of you are thinking, well, why do you have to go with a grown kid? Well, here's the deal. She transferred in from a junior college and she can't get a parking permit her first year. So parking is $2.50 an hour in the parking garage. And so we don't want her staying by herself in an RV either. So April or myself are taking turns going up there and being with her. And we just go ahead and take her and pick her up. That makes it a lot easier. There is a parking lot where she can park in the mornings. But in the evenings, it would definitely be the parking garage. And that runs into money. So and right now, April and Richard have no income because he's off work. And she's not working because she's being with him. So we're just trying to save some pennies, and I got a little baby car that gets 40 miles to the gallon, so I can run up there and help, and it's not real expensive. So I was just giving y'all a heads up on what's going to be going on. I hope that before I leave today, I can make another video uh, and let it come out middle of the week. But if not, this is Sunday the 27th, and I'm going to try to get this uploaded today. And I'll be back Friday. So if I don't have a video up this week, y'all know where I am and what's going on. Keep us in your prayers. Pray for Richard. We definitely need a miracle. I'll talk to y'all in a few days. The good Lord bless you.